Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As we see this in this playlist we are talking about various method to explain the prediction of a machine learning or deep learning model which is called explainable AI. In this particular video we will focus on a very popular algorithm called line and how and what does uh, and how does it uh, explain any kind of black box algorithm so we'll look deep into that and we'll also compare uh, this method the line method with the sharply values method that we saw in the previous video so yeah it's going to be interesting i hope well so line stands for local interpretable model agnostic explanation so the entire definition of this line method can just be seen from its uh, name so first local means it's giving us explanation for individual prediction not for the entire data set so that was local interpretable means it it generates an interpretable model from the deep from the black box model so how does it does it it uh, from the output of the black box model it fits a simple linear model or a simple decision tree most of the kids is just a linear regression model that it fits and we'll see how it does that model agnostic means uh, it does not depend upon what model you are using or what model you are trying to uh, predict as long as you have the input and the output you can you can explain any black box algorithm an explanation is definitely or the explanation that it gives so yeah so let's now look at this now let's now look, look at this plot so what is this plot so this is a plot for a classification uh, method where x1 is my one feature and x2 is my second feature so the red portion that we see is a decision boundary so this is a decision boundary of a very complex black box algorithm where the red belongs to zero class and uh, and the blue belongs to class one right. and right now our task is to generate explanation for this particular sample the one i have uh, rounded the sample from the zero class having the red cross so what does lime algorithm will do is it will first generate some random number so we from this one will get some value of x1 and x2 definitely and using that x1 and x2 it will generate this random points like like this one like this one like this one like this one and then it will feed this random points to the neural network and the prediction of the neural network will decide its color so uh, so this x1 x2 value it will put into the neural network and it gives one so uh, you color it according to that you won't color it like uh, definitely because when there is a lot of uh, dimension it's very difficult to do that for just for the sake of visualization for this simple case we'll just try to interpret the line model all right so first the first step is it uh, perturbs the actual output that you you want to explain and generates multiple uh, samples multiple perturbed sample then it process that perturbed samples into the black box model and generates its prediction and according to that prediction it creates a simple linear model so you can see this this simple line is the linear model that it creates if we zoom into there and also one more important thing is uh, the different points like this one like this one so the size of this point refers to how much weightage is given to them so the points that are close to the explanation point they are given higher weightage and the points that are farther away like let's say this one this point is given lesser weightage that's why its size is smaller this point is given farther for further more less weightage so its it size is even lesser so like that you put a kernel size so this, this kernel size is an hyperparameter in the lime uh, algorithm that you need to decide all right so if we zoom in if, if we zoom into the, this particular area so this is the zoom in part we see that this is simple line, simple linear algorithm that has been used to draw this simple decision boundary and it will nothing be like uh, you know the theta 1 x1 plus theta 2 x2 and now it's very interpretable now 
because if the value of theta 1 is higher that means x1 value has higher contribution in the prediction and if theta 2 is positive and also the direction if uh, theta 2 is uh, positive that means x2 is positively correlating and if uh, theta 2 is negative high negative value that means uh, x2 value has a negative influence on the prediction like that we can interpret using this line method all right and often this method the the simple algorithm that we call is lasso regression they use why they use lasso regression because uh, when you have a lot of feature lasso regression reduces the feature uh, importance which have barely any effect so that's why it's easier to interpret it only gives uh, fewer fewer significant feature that are impacting your data so now that we explain now that we understand how line algorithm works now we can go on jupyter notebook and uh, perform that on the data set that we have been using in this, uh, video series so in the jupyter notebook our goal is to first train a neural network model and using that using the line explanation method we'll try to explain uh, the prediction of the neural network model all right so first we'll import the necessary libraries then i'll import the training data uh, from the fault faulty data and fault free data then i'm concatenating concatenating them to create my final data frame this data frame has both faulty and fault free data then i'm creating a standard scalar to normalize my data so i'm just i'm fitting the standard scalar using fault free data only and then i'm creating i'm uh, sampling only 10 simulation run here i'm only taking uh, 10 simulation run because uh, total there are like uh, 500 simulation run if i take all that data it's very computationally expensive for me that's why i'm only taking 10 simulation runs i'm transforming my data and y is my predicted uh, fault class as i am training a neural network i have to do one hot encoding so i'm doing that on my y data y encoder and then i'm doing training and test play for the test size i'm keeping 20 percent as my test uh, data then this is my neural network which is fairly simple which we have also seen in the previous video and uh, yeah i'm using softmax at the end because it's a classification algorithm and yeah this is the uh, summary of my neural network after that i'm training my neural network with a batch size of 128 and finally i'm able to get around 91 percent accuracy on the training and 88 percent on the testing which is not bad there is a little overfitting we can see here but yeah uh, but our goal is to explain it so first uh, yeah before explaining let's see how it performs so this is the dc um, let's say the confusion matrix so we see there is confusion between fault class 0 and fault class 3 except for that most of the fault classes are well classified with 90 percent 87 percent accuracy overall it has an 88 percent accuracy and yeah i did it on multiple fault instances so from multiple fault instances i get like around 86 percent accuracy then we can do t-sni visualization this is how the data looked before the training we see that there is a lot of mixing up of different classes and before it was trained and after training we see that well most of the faults are grouped in separate groups which signifies that the uh, algorithm is well able to you know classify different type of faults and now let's go and see explaining so this is the heart of this uh, video where we'll try to use lime to explain this neural network model i'll create an instance first lime lime the tabular lime tabular explainer so what does what are these inputs to this one so x train is my training data it needs this x train data so that it can when uh, it does the perturbation of uh, each sample it needs to know the distribution of each feature so that it, it it will you know perturb accordingly then the feature names so the features name i got from the reduced data column like this just the name of the feature then the class name i got from my one hot encoder vector and discrete discretize continuous equal to two. that means it uh, converts my category the continuous features into bins according to their normal uh, according to their mean and standard deviation assuming they belong to a normal distribution well for that i'm just taking a random index 34 and for that index of the test data I, i'll try to generate an explanation all right so i just uh, put index equal to 34 
and then I am using my X test data. I have to expand one dimension because my model expects it to be in batch sizes. So uh, that's why I have to expand one dimension for, which signifies the batch of a single sample. Don't worry about it. It's nothing. It's just the way Keras model expects the input to be. Then Y thread will be a one hot uh, encoded vector. I pass it through the inverse transform and then I got my the label, the corresponding fault class. It's a 2D matrix. That's why I'm doing 0, 0 to get the actual the number. So the predicted fault class here is uh, fault 7. So that was it. So that was it. Next, we'll see how we can explain this instance. We are going to explain the IDX 34. Now that lime explainer, this one, this lime explainer dot explain instance. And then you give your instance. So X test uh, IDX will be my instance. Then I'm giving my prediction function. So model dot predict will be my prediction function where model is my trained neural network. And number of feature uh, means how many number of features you want to show. So here it will show me only 10 top 10 number of features that are contributing. And the top labels one means the predicted fault. It will only show me for the predicted fault. And then I'm using this exp and I'm going to plot. I'm going to show in in notebook object from here and uh, show table equal to true and so all false. So this show all basically if I make it true, it shows all the features because but I don't need I only need to see the feature that have some contribution so that I can easily explain. Well, and you see that the prediction probability is seven, which is good because uh, our prediction probability the actual uh, from the model is seven also. And we can see the XMB4 has a very high contribution uh, same as from here, XMEA29 has the next highest contribution. See, XMEA29 has the next highest contribution and similarly like that. So this is how the line uh, explanation happens, but it has a big drawback. So during the perturbation, it, it is totally random. So from the same sample, if I run this uh, method again, this feature value will change because they are highly dependent upon the perturbation uh, because it perturbs every time and it samples randomly every time from the uh, from this uh, particular instance or from this particular sample that I want to explain that perturbation is always random. So the feature importance also keeps on changing. So if I just run it again. And now it's 413 and now 29 is gone. 29 is gone to the last. So yeah. So yeah, th that is one disadvantage of line method because it's, uh, you know, it's a little unstable. Now let's compare this with sharp. To compare, compare this with sharp, first we'll import the sharp library. I'm, I'm converting my test data into a data frame because uh, then it's easy to, uh, for, for the sharp to easy to visualize each feature. Then I'm creating an instance of my explainer, sharp dot kernel explainer, and model dot predict is the same neural network prediction method. And I'm sampling using k nearest neighbor. So what it does, it from my x train data, which is like huge amount of data, it it creates only hundred samples, which most explains my data. And from because this is easier now using this uh, particular data. It will be easier for my explainer to sample. And now if I run, so explainer dot sharp values, I want to generate sharp values for this particular ins, uh, for this particular uh, sample. And uh, Y pred is my prediction. So if I run this, yeah. So it takes a lot of time. That is one disadvantage of sharp because it generates a lot of combination and we have 53 uh, feature. So it generates uh, importance for each combination of feature and that's why this is for single sample it takes this amount of time and now that the training is finished we can visualize the force plot for each feature we just run this and we see that yeah so x x mv4 has the highest importance uh, so it's XMEA 13, XMB 9 and we, we compare it with the line and yeah, it's pretty much same XMB 4 has the highest contribution here and also SAP also if I run it again, it will have some 
uh, you know change in the feature importance because it's also randomly making different feature but yeah mostly it, it is more consistent so i run this again and i you see that xmb4 xmb9 13 not that bad xmb4 13 9 yeah a little bit change but mostly it's it's more consistent compared to you know compared to the lime and now let's visualize let's visualize for this particular fault class how does uh, different feature affect this fault so for that what i'm doing i'm i'm for so this white bread is the fault that is predicted by my neural network i'm plotting the normal class and the the faulty class and the normal class on top of each other so that we can see which feature is giving me the highest uh, you know deviation from the normal class and i'll see the consistency with respect to the predicted one from the you know sharp method so for the sharp method it says me xmb4 has the you know uh, a highest contribution so let's check let's check xmb4 well yes yeah, see so here xmb4 is completely different from the normal normal data so yeah it's it's giving uh, it's giving us a reasonable uh, performance that okay your uh, xmb4 because of this xmb4 feature i am deciding your input data is belong to fault number 7 all right yeah so that's how you can basically interpret it the effect the high influence of xmb4 does not mean that the fault 7 is caused by you know xmb4 so there is uh, the correlation and causation the correlation does not always mean causation you can it's not the same but you can it's in the similar line that if, you, if your model thinks this is important that does not mean that particular fault is caused only by this particular fault there may be multiple you know there may be multiple uh, factors that are contributing it together so keep in mind that whenever you are trying to explain using lime or sharp uh, this kind of method all right. so that was it about this video in the next video is going to be the final video of this series and in there we'll see the gradient mist method which are uh, very specific to neural network uh, explanation till then see you and uh, yeah i hope to see you in the next video